Hey Nancy Drew fans, we're back with book 15, The Haunted Bridge. When this book was first published in 1937, the Stratemeyer Syndicate is doing quite well under the direction of sisters Harriet and Edna. Author Mildred is integral to that success as she is now writing all three of the Top Girl series. My copy is the revised 1972 version. I have to admit that I found this book to be pretty dull, despite the fact that the first sentence starts off really well and jumps right into the mystery. Sorry, miss, but I wouldn't go near that bridge for a million dollars, said the young, freckle-faced caddy. But the next sentence gets right into one of my big problems with the story. Why, Chris? Nancy Drew asked him. She had just driven her golf ball over 200 yards into a patch of woods bordering the 16th hole. Easily 25% of the story is consumed by Nancy's golf game. She enters a tournament, so we get a play-by-play -play of her first round, quarters, semifinal, and final matches, including passages like... After Betsy chipped her ball onto the green, she was eight feet from the hole. Nancy putted her ball with care and confidence. It rolled so swiftly that a little gasp of horror went up from the crowd. Many thought it would end at the far side of the green. But the ball had been tapped accurately, and it dropped into the cup. To top it off, when Nancy wins the tournament, the youngest woman to do so, and breaking a women's course record, she gets the silver trophy because the gold goes to the men's winner. In this story, Nancy, Bess, and George are vacationing at Deer Mountain Hotel while Carson Drew is working on a jewelry smuggling case. He asks for Nancy's help investigating his key suspect, Margaret Judson. Nancy meets her for like two seconds and is certain that she's innocent. Instead, Nancy sets her sights on Martin Bardescu, a golfer who's staying at the hotel. Bess calls him Barty the Bargin because he follows Nancy around relentlessly. And Nancy's convinced that he's a smuggler because he has several different styles of handwriting. When Nancy asks him about it, he explains. The way I write varies with my moods. Today, your charm had me so baffled I could hardly sign my name at all. He then moves in for the kiss, and Nancy's so alarmed that she falls off the terrace and sprains her hands. This is one of very few times in the story that Nancy's in any danger at all, and it's one of the few moments of real excitement. Early on, Nancy figures out the mystery of the haunted bridge. After that, she spends the rest of the book helping her dad with the tangentially related jewelry mystery. Another thing I didn't like about this story, I'm really starting to feel sorry for Ned, who spends most of the book either trailing Nancy while she follows down boring leads, or taking care of an old caretaker who is in a remote cabin. Ned never questions Nancy, but he does start to express some frustration, uh, particularly when she announces that she is going off with a young professor back to the hotel, and she asks Ned just to stay and take care of the old man. Shortly after, Ned gets dressed in his best striped suit to take Nancy to a dance at the hotel, but instead she ropes him into doing some sleuthing. Can you help me? Nancy asked. I thought you didn't need my assistance, he replied impulsively. Oh, Ned, it was just that I couldn't explain everything to you about Mr. Wardell, and I'm afraid I can't even now, but sometime I'll be able to. That doesn't matter, Nancy. Just tell me what to do, and I'll try to carry out orders. There's only one description of a meal, and this time it's combined with a making fun of best moment. Since it was so late, Nancy ordered only orange juice and breakfast rolls. You can't win a golf tournament on a diet like that, protested Bess, who loved to eat. Next up, the clue of the tapping heels. <laughs> 